I, I worked in I worked in Morocco. Uh, uh, in fact, I was the first neurologist ever to work in Morocco, uh, and we had a child there, so uh, it's uh, great memories. Uh, we spent eighteen months there between uh, uh, stays in France and. Um, uh, and and then um, my moving to uh, the U.S. and then to Canada. As you know, I'm a neurologist, uh, retired now for almost eight years. And uh, so I work in the Middle East. I uh, I worked uh, with the Institut Pasteur in Tehran, and so I have visited Iran many times. But uh, we went to uh, Syria only once because there was a, a meeting of the um, uh, neurology, the French Neurological Society had a meeting. Uh, Syria, has all, France has always had a, a lot of influence in uh, Syria. And um, during the First World War, my my wife's grandfather went uh, to Damascus with the French troops, and uh, that was the only time that Damascus was bombed when the French took it uh, in 1920. So we this is uh, Damascus where we. This is Syria, uh, stuck between uh, Lebanon, was in fact part of the greater Syria um, until uh, it was uh, separated. Uh, the French uh, had influence there, the British had influence uh, in the south. Um, this is the view from our hotel. You can see that there is a um, uh, mountains around the city, okay. and the city is climbing to the mountains. Um, the we went there, uh, interestingly, a few months before the war. Those are views. This is uh, um, the views of the old city where you can see uh, the that there is a mixture of uh, Oriental, but also uh, Roman ruins are there right in the middle of the city, as you can see here. Uh, but but uh, the this is the mosque. Uh, the on the right is the wall of the Umayyad mosque, which was which we'll see in greater detail a bit further. Uh, those are the typical houses uh, with uh, uh, many balconies and also some special uh, windows from which women can observe what's going in the street because they didn't have, they couldn't come out, but could see what was happening. This is before remodeling, and uh, uh, many houses were even before the war were in uh, in a bad shape. But this is once they have been remodeled. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is beautiful work. Uh, this is my Louise, uh, dressed as she should, with uh, a fairly long. Uh, dress uh, that uh, is proportional to her age. Young have their dress up to the knee and older have to have them longer. The mosque is uh, uh, the place where uh, is, interestingly the where Saladin who was one of the great generals of of uh, the uh, Muslim empires, 
uh, has been buried. Here is his portrait. Here is his tomb. And uh, as, as you see, it's a very respected tomb. Um, he is a model for future generations. Again, uh, a mixture of Arabic and uh, Roman, a lot of life. This is one of the entrance of the mosque, who is the mosque, the Umayyad mosque. The mosque is character. This mosque is characterized by being built on an old uh, Christian church. Um, sorry, we uh, this this picture shows my Louis buying damask tish uh, fabric. Uh, we we came back. You see those ones here. This is the typical uh, damask. Uh, in outside, outside here, inside there. Um, <laughs> this uh, I had to give a talk uh, at the French uh, embassy, and you can see how well dressed I am, but also how well dressed their furnitures are. Uh, to enter the mosque, you need to uh, take your shoes. Off, obviously, and you, and this is the center of the mosque, which is a big free space. In the middle, you have the area where you wash your feet before coming, and this is the treasure on the left. You see the this is this is the safe house where they were where the uh, people were putting their money. As you can see, uh, it's rather primitive, but apparently it was working. And this uh, mosque it has been uh, built uh, by Christians. And this, is, uh, this was a basilic uh, dedicated to John the Baptist called in the Muslim cult as Yah. He, he is honored as a prophet by both Christians and Muslims. A, a legend dated from the 6th century holds that the building contains the head of John the Baptist. The mosque is believed by the Muslims to be the place where Jesus, named Isa, will return at the end of the days. And this is where people wash their feet before entering the mosque. And you will see these extraordinary mosaics that are surrounding the center place. And he uh, you might be seeing that some of the women are in black. They represent the Shia. And surprisingly, we came out of, of, of our visit thinking that this was an area where both Shiite, uh, the, the, both types of Muslims, we're living together, and here is a group of Shiites escorted by their men uh, to go and pray. This corner in the left is reserved to the Shiai, but and here they are. Um, I'm my, I'm taking these pictures, and you can see there is a a woman there who doesn't seem to be too happy that I am taking pictures of this area. Uh, some more artwork, which is absolutely incredible. All around this great yard is this type of uh, mosaic. You 
can barely see that it's a mosaic. You have the impression it's a paint. There is four towers. It's probably the only one uh, of the mosque which has four towers. In a corner is another cult among the Muslims, which is the uh, dervish. Uh, it's a form of ecstatic dancing during which they turn and they turn and they turn with a small orchestra. And here is the incredible presence of a Christian baptister, the place where the people are, are being baptized, originating from the uh, uh, origin, which was built and used uh, up to by the Christians up to the sixth century. So this marble is originally from the sixth century and was used by Christians. Christians still can baptize in that mosque. Like you have the uh, brother enemies of Shiites and, and others living in the same roof there. Here is the um, special place um, uh, or where it is said that the head of uh, John the Baptist is. Oops, sorry. I, I, I hope you notice this. Uh, this is uh, La Défense, I can't remember what it is, uh, an elephant tooth, but it's the one from uh, the uh, from the mastodon, the mammoth that was previously that was found in in uh, frozen somewhere, but it was brought as a gift to Saint John the Baptist. You you imagine how big that animal was. In the mosque, there's a place for everybody, and it is extraordinary. So this is where the uh, Mujdin uh, will say the uh, will call for the prayer and will and the stairs are th where the uh, officiant comes to deliver. Uh, message. From Damascus, we we went with our French neurologist, uh, French neur neurologist, to Basra. Basra is an extraordinary city. It was built by the Nabatean. The, the Nabateans are the ones who built those uh, uh, in uh, this in, in enormous uh, city uh, close in Jordan, uh, who who were the end of the Silk Road, uh, and in Basra, Basra was built by the Nabatean in the second century before Christ, and then was the uh, uh, used by the Romans and uh, Christian became the dominant religion in Bosra uh, uh, around the 5th century and it played an important life in the, an important part uh, because there was a big battle uh, in uh, for Muhammad. This is uh, taken from the birth uh, um, and you will see that the, what is extraordinary is the fact that we have a Roman theatre in Basra, which has been incorporated into a, a castle, a middle-aged castle from the Templars. 
I don't, so here you see. Okay, so here you are at the junction on the right. You have the mus the, the the castle uh, stones, and on the left and at the end of the corridor, you see the uh, the circus. So and where the circulation to go and take a seat here are the. Uh, is the fortress. And here is the marvelous circus. So this circus, it's a, it's a, a, a semicircle enclosed in a square. Yeah. Uh, admirably conserved by the heat. And, and you can see, in fact, uh, that at some point there was sand covering so much that the columns in the at the bottom have kept their white polish when the walls have, have not. Then we came back to uh, the to uh, Damas. And visited uh, one of the most, uh, oh, where to put that, most active politically, most active mosques in the country, which is a uh, surprisingly in the memory of a woman, uh, the sister of the first imam. And like all the uh, Muslim, as you can see, there is no uh, representation of God's creation. Um, as you can see, it's only uh, uh, drawings. But nothing that can be called the face or flower. Inside, it's exuberantly rich. Uh, as you can see, all these women are in black. This is the most revered uh, Muslim of the uh, the Shia. It's um, according to uh, the tradition. This mosque contains the grave of uh, Zainab. Uh, the daughter of Ali and Fatima, who is the granddaughter of Muhammad. The tomb became a center uh, for religious studies in Syria and a destination of mass pilgrimage. Uh, normally, the uh, all the Shia visit this mosque in, during their lifetime. I don't know why and we couldn't figure out why there's all those uh, clothes, probably gift. But again, this is part of the Shi'i. Uh, you always have a grill, a grid separating the people from the nothing which is inside, because in, supposedly the spirit of that person, of that saint. So you put your shoes back, and then we go to Palmyra. Damascus, Palmyra. Palmyra is here, right in the middle of what is now a desertic area, but which uh, when uh, in the time of the glory of Palmyra, uh, it was uh, a thick forest. Um, we took the bus, which is uh, livable. It's not great. Um, 
but it's safe and there was no absolutely no problem. They so Palmyra. This is the desert. This is a castle built by the uh, uh, what do you call them in English? The Templars were part of them. So Palmyra was again on the Silk Road and it was uh, renowned well before the Crusades. And you can see, okay, here is a incredible view of Palmyra. Uh, you see, this is called the Great Colonnade. And in fact, uh, in the center here, do you see my arrow? Do you see my yes, arrow? We, uh, arrow? we see it. Okay. In the, so this is the Great Colonnade, uh, which uh, showed that the city had three entrances. Here is something we'll see a little bit later. It's the, the Temple of Baal, uh, which is uh, obviously pre-Christian. And the city was, was renowned uh, in the second century uh, after Christ uh, because the, the, the queen... Uh, Okay, from Zenobia. Queen Zenobia had become extremely powerful. In fact, she she had built a castle here, right at the center. We'll see the theater later. And you see this this, this that's all is left of the forest now. But this uh, is an Incredible view. Uh, seen from the castle, you can see those monuments here, and we will see them better here. Here, there's plenty of them. When you pay attention, you you find some intact, others barely stable, and those represented uh, an extraordinary <laughs> uh, business. The generations of people from Palmyra had built those, and they were, in, in this very dry climate, the bodies were very well conserved. So, people were entombed into those tombs, tombs in which you, of which you see hundreds around, each uh, belonged to a family who was renting it, uh, making sure that the body was well preserved. And, uh, and uh, that was one of the main business of this city. Here is the, the entrance of one of them. And inside uh, there was uh, statues and uh, you can see how decorated this was. Now this is the Temple of Baal, uh, three centuries before Christ, uh, absolutely enormous, majestic. Unfortunately, uh, it's one that's where the uh, uh, troops um, of uh, the rebels uh, had established their main area 
to store uh, their trucks and all their equipments and uh, suffice it to say that it's probably there's I mean I, I don't I was thinking one day about getting the pictures of those places destroyed but I think it would be it's probably better to keep the records when they were up uh, there was no not a stone left of the temple when you see all oh, And this is now the city that Zenobia, uh, uh, Zenobia had the uh, goal of bringing a country to, uh, the, to the top of the uh, cities in the Roman Empire. And uh, she found that the best thing was to uh, uh, fight the Romans. Uh, and uh, this is the kind of things that uh, is is bad for any small the Jews uh, lived through that. The, and Palmyra lived through it. And uh, the Roman Emperor Aurelian, around the 250 uh, of our era, came and destroyed the city completely. Um, and only this was left. So this is the theater. As you can see, it's a small theater because this was, <laughs> this was a small city state. But Zenobia, uh, when she had battled the Roman, ended up uh, losing the war. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, she, uh, she was taken as a prisoner and uh, dragged between the uh, uh, for the triumph of uh, Aurelian uh, uh, through Rome. And it said that she was beautiful and served as a toy when she was brought to Rome. Around there, people are living, and uh, it's interesting that they, um, yeah, I'm going faster than my, so this is uh, the next, uh, let me show you. So after Palmyra, uh, we went, you should, we're at Mary Louise, um, uh, was uh, learning Arabic at the time. She she had studied the Quran, and in fact, uh, we were so seduced by Syria that she made the plan of uh, spending six months in Aleppo. Um, Aleppo, well, that um, would be the center of the uh, uh, rebel. Uh, uh, rebellion, and uh, we so we we were we went to Homs. Homs is a saint city. So we were that there must have been people who who knew that something was boiling at that time because we were told that don't go to Homs; it's dangerous. And we, uh, in fact, we, in that way, when we decided to go to uh, the uh, what this picture is, to the crack de chevalier, uh, this this is what was built by the Crusaders. Um, it was not only her. Uh, hospital, uh, not only a, a fortified uh, castle, but it was also a hospital. And uh, this 
we have seen many cattle in Europe and uh, few of them are Maybe I should go back to show you the already no. We have seen few castles in Europe, but few of them were that big, that impressive. This is the moat. And those are the rooms where the patients were taken care of. This As you can see, the Muslims have uh, created uh, uh, a place to call to the prior. In fact, it's not the call to the prior which occurs from uh, the, from another place in the mosque. This is uh, where you recite uh, the sacred Quran. So here, up, I went too far. Yeah, you see this. Okay, so now, following the war, everything which was not rock has disappeared here, because that's where the rebels had put their uh, HQ went uh, and stored all their ammunitions uh, when, they, when they were at the peak of their success. From here, unfortunately, there's fog today, but what you see is Lebanon. And from here, you can see the sea, the sea, the Mediterranean Sea. So we were here to in the crack de chevalier, and we are we are going to see something that that is absolutely extraordinary in that in that whole area north of Damascus. It's the Christian the Christian villages. Those are area where that nature has dug uh, places to be able to evacuate the waters, and uh, it's so quiet, and you everywhere you turn, you find those. Yeah, I have to say we left um, Syria with the impression, I have already mentioned it a bit, that, uh, with the impression that there was an extraordinary, how to say that, agreement between the different religious communities. And here, yeah, this is a, a Catholic, uh, an Orthodox uh, church and there are nuns living there and you see regularly muslims coming and praying to the to this saint no this is absolutely amazing so this is uh, uh, those people uh, speak aramean which was the uh, language uh, of uh, of the Christ uh, of Christ? I think in English, Ahami, I said Aramaic. Not sure. And this is uh, another of those fresks. The Dry weather permits the 
to really save the colors and that. And that I was afraid to be <laughs> to be too long, uh, but uh, I uh, see that we are through now. And uh, well, thank you very much, uh, as well. And could could you stop sharing, please? Thank you. And I will do view gallery. Well, that was a very interesting uh, talk. And you mentioned uh, some of the areas that have been totally destroyed. Um, could, could you list off the areas that you visited that will no longer be available to view when people are able to go back to Syria safely? Uh, the temple, the Baal temple has yeah. been... Uh destroyed at uh, 80 percent uh, to the contrary and probably because those are catholic orthodox the russians didn't destroy any of the uh, uh, christian uh, churches and the christian cities uh, interestingly the nuns had been displaced and Probably for the uh, an innumerable, innumerable number of of times uh, will come back. <laughs> it is something extraordinary there. Uh, to the contrary, the crack de chevalier has lost half of its volume. Um, um, but I suspect that it, the crack will be rebuilt, but by probably by something like the UNESCO or something like this. Um, but uh, the Temple of Baal is now equivalent. Uh, this is um, the city of Basra. I think I have notes on what happened to the city of Basra. Um, so the city of Basra, uh, there was, I, I took specifically notes about this because this is, it's a unique uh, place because this is a, a Roman circus which is enclosed in in a fortress of uh, uh, built by the Crusaders, I mean, c'est la quadrature du cercle. <laughs> uh, so there was gunfire in 2012, and after two, 22 months of uh, conflict. Um, it was reported that the citadel has been used uh, uh, by the army to shell the town on a daily basis. Since the February 2014, the city was under the control of the Syrian army. Uh, uh, but the, in January 2015, the army's 5th Division confronted a contingent of rebels from near the famous amphitheater. A fierce battle broke out between the groups. The army shelled and destroyed the theater and the whole neighborhood. So this theater is no more to be seen. It's I have not been there to see it since. But, uh... well, are there any comments or questions from any of the uh, attendees? You can just uh, start to talk. Unmute yourself and talk if you wish. I can't see everybody. Uh, Charles? Yes? Uh, I have a question for you. Uh, those columns that you showed, 
um, in the um, Temple of Baal or in other places in, in uh, other places as well. The top decorations uh, seem to me that they are Corinthian style, like the in ancient Corinthian style columns. Um, is this? Do, do the Greeks have to do anything with the construction of these, or they are all Roman? Oh, uh, it's quite interesting. The, the Roman Empire systematically um, took over whatever the previous people had done. And, and it's specifically uh, true vis-a-vis -vis the Greek uh civilization you know i mean the name of the gods were changed but the gods were still the same personalities right and here we are at a, an area where there is in fact the people who were in um uh, in palmyra were going to india on one hand and on the other side, we're going to uh, Greece and uh, and Rome. Um, the, there was a total, this was a total mixture. That was the Silk Road. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, I'm sure they, are, they had architects who could do both styles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. Yeah, very interesting talk. Nice to see things before they were this. I didn't time it. I didn't time it very well. <laughs> the last perfect. time I we have oh. we have we have time to ask questions and talk. Anyone else? Uh, have anyone else been to Syria? Carolyn, you can unmute yourself. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I lived in Beirut from 1965 to 1968. So had been, you know, and came to Beirut by driving through Syria. So I have been to Aleppo and to Homs. And it's too bad you couldn't get to Homs because um, it's famous for huge, huge wooden water wheels. Um, and, um, and which is an auditory as well as a visual phenomenon because you can hear these things creaking. Uh, all the time, quite loudly in a different frequencies, depending on the size of the water wheel. And the town is kind of interesting because it's on a smaller scale um, from Damascus, but has, um, so you get a, a more condensed um, impression of those balconies and intricate woodwork um, windows and, you know, viewing balconies um, that Joel was talking about. So, uh, you know, that's that's one of my things. And, I also feel very grateful that I was able to see Palmyra before it was destroyed. Yeah, and the Croc de Chevalier. And, but in Lebanon also, you know, there's the Baalbek, which is the temple to Baal in the eastern part of Lebanon, and um, several, and a small, very tiny, kind of the, just the contrast to Croc de Chevalier is, is that they're, they're tiny crusader castles, but look much the same with these passages and stairways going every which direction. That was very interesting. Uh, what, uh, what, I, what I keep from that trip is the, how when you visit a country, uh, like we did three weeks, you cannot get the most profound feelings of the country. Uh, it's really, we were absolutely astounded how all those religions were getting together. Mm -hmm. And uh, six months later, they are bombing each other. And uh, that was, sorry, um, <laughs> The political reporter that I was didn't have any idea of that. No idea. Except one thing. The, our guide, when we went to visit that mosque, in uh, uh, that Shiite mosque, we, uh, Shiite are, are a little bit aggressive in 
their way of dealing with uh, foreigners. And so we took a, a guide who, who was a Palestinian, in fact. And uh, he, he invited us at this place to lunch and didn't talk very much, but we noticed that wherever he was going, there was people who were all, probably other Palestinians who would come and he would give them money. <laughs> But large sums of money. I thought it was he was preparing something, and I'm not sure what. But he was distributing money right and left, and that was rare for a guide. <laughs> I had a somewhat similar experience in 1965. I spent almost a week in Lebanon, traveling around, and I also was very impressed by how. Uh, people were very friendly, and there seemed to be a great mixture of the different religions. And and then um, a year later, the the whole place blew up, and it was sad. That was it was on my list of place to go back to. Yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, there is very few example of uh, uh, Christian. Uh, a Christian monument being turned into uh, a Muslim, except uh, maybe in, also in Turkey, mm -hmm. that with the uh, the big mosque of Lou, yeah. uh, the Blue Mosque, uh, which was uh, built by the Christians in 900 something. So, Joel, I was interested that you showed us uh, the buildings um, with the balconies. Um, and there was the one that had the special windows for the women to look out. But I just came back from Morocco, and almost all the buildings like that with balconies, were, our guide was telling us, were the houses that the Jewish people lived in. Because the Muslims wouldn't have balconies where the women and men would hang out and look over the street. They tended to look inwards into the courtyard, which is private. So do you know if those balconies and uh, those buildings were originally mm. Jewish buildings or were they Muslim buildings in the first no, uh, no, I don't know. But they, there is something called uh, Musharabie, which is typical, typically Arabic, uh, Muslim, yes. and uh, which is a, a way of being able to look in the street without being seen from inside, from outside. Uh, and that was uh, where the, the women were kept. Uh, and that is absolutely typically Muslim. Now, the balconies is something a little bit different, but the Boucharabie, you know, are those uh, crisscross of wood that... Girls, uh, yeah. 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 No. Any other comments or questions? Otherwise, we had a total impression of safety. <laughs> Absolutely no anxiety. Um, and we were traveling the both of us with buses. <laughs> So, well, again, uh, Joel, thank you very much for uh, giving us a talk about an area that most of us uh, will probably not visit anymore. We don't know when things will settle down in that part of the world, but it was a very interesting uh, talk and we've seen things that no longer exist, unfortunately. Before, so again, thank you, Joel. And before we stop the meeting, I just want to let you know that the next meeting will be on May the 16th, and I will be uh, giving a presentation on a week that I spent in, based in Nice in the uh, French Riviera. We are visiting a number of little towns around that area. And then in June, June the 13th, Peter Wing and Claire Weeks are going to talk about their trip to Morocco. And if you know uh, Peter and uh, Claire, they're also part of the photography group, so they usually have beautiful photographs. 
they tend to uh, do a lot of biking when they're on vacation, so I'm sure we'll see some biking expeditions. Um, but they assure me that they're not going to be active all the time. They're going to take some time to just hang out, as they call it. So we look forward to that presentation, which will be the last one before the summer recess. Then we'll start back in September. I'm always looking for people, especially people who have not presented before, who would be interested in giving a presentation to the group. And if you uh, think you would like to talk to the group, could you please email me and let me know your idea? I'm pretty flexible with ideas. And uh, if you don't have uh, a talk that you think would fill the, the whole session, I'm happy to try to find somebody else to give a short session also, so we fill up the hour. Okay. Again, thanks to everyone for joining us today, and particularly thanks to Joel. And I'm going to end the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. And all the best to your wife, Joel. <laughs> Thank you. Good recovery.